Arthur Hayes has reemerged, Naomi. He has re-emerged. So last year, he's been on the run since then uh, because the US government said that they want to arrest him. Uh, charges of fraud and all kinds of things. He is, of course, the co-founder of BitMEX. And uh, and he then just went off the radar uh, because the US government was after him. And he's just re-emerged. He wrote this blog post. It is called Walking Away. And he said he re-emerged because all of the game stuff, uh, stuff all of the uh, uh, Robin Hood and the hearings going on right now, he said he had to re-emerge to talk talk about this stuff. And it's really interesting uh, what he's saying kind of reiterates what we, we've been talking about on the show here is that, you know, the, the actual plumbing of our financial system is kind of corrupt. And, uh, and people are saying that, you know, with Robin Hood, and they stopped being able to trade GME stock and all of that, people are saying, you know, the rules of the game change. And he points out in this essay, actually, the rules of the game didn't change. It's just that people didn't understand the rules going into this. So it's a pretty interesting article. Uh, ben, what are your thoughts on the reemergence of Arthur Hayes? I mean, you know, it's it's interesting to see him back in the public sphere. We've obviously not heard a lot from him, though. <laughs> in some ways, you know, Vanity Fair did do that huge profile of him, so he's been on people's minds. Uh, to me, this was coming out, you know, and I asked the group, I was like, okay, you know, he wrote all this stuff, what's he actually saying? And it seems he's weighing in on the hearings that are going on, which is I think he makes a good point in some ways, pointing to the fact that, you know, Robin Hood is getting the brunt of this ire. And now, you know, for some God unknown reason, Section 230 was brought up in these hearings yesterday. But uh, I think it points to the fact that, you know, there are things that are operating behind the scenes. And a lot of these, you know, holding companies and stuff like that, that were part of the reason that Robin Hood had to stop trading because they had to get go get more assets to float those fees uh, because they didn't have enough cash on hand potentially. You know, people don't know the names of those companies. These are ones that operate behind the scenes. And while, you know, the few and the mighty in Wall Street might know about them, your average person doesn't. So in that sense, I think it's interesting. You know, he's saying look behind the curtain a bit and that's something people should continue to do and maybe should be the main takeaway from some of this Robin Hood stuff. But uh, Jen, I'm curious to get your thoughts here. I think Arthur's missing the spotlight a little bit. I think that Vanity <laughs> Fair article came out and he was like, you know what? I miss being talked about. I miss being this this guy that everyone looks to for their opinion. Um, I think I think he didn't really say anything new um, when I was reading it. I, I was happy that he wrote it because, you know, these are things that I we need to be talking about so that people who are entering the space or who are just reading the headlines kind of understand more about what's going on behind the curtain. I think he said some valuable things, but I honestly think that he just misses being in the spotlight and he's going to be writing a lot, a lot more. We're going to be hearing from him and whether that is good or bad for him, we will see. I like, I like Jen's take. I, th I think, I mean, I think Arthur is a great character in the crypto canon and for him to be back, uh, on Twitter and publishing, uh, self-publishing on, on his own blog. I think it's, it's a fantastic development for this bull cycle. Uh, he's just a really compelling person in the space. Uh, this Vanity Fair profile just sort of like, I think sort of cements that in an interesting way and sort of uh, puts, puts forth sort of a good faith conversation on the good and bad of a figure like Arthur Hayes. And for him to reemerge, I'm just pumped about it. I think it's cool to have him back, uh, back in the Twitter sphere. So uh, welcome back, Arthur, and we'll hopefully read some more blog posts from you soon. Yeah, I think that's a great point. And I agree that I think he's a figure that's going to go down in history. Like he's going to be one of these key players in the crypto uh, uh, moment of, uh, of right now. So we'll have to see how that plays out. I hope it's for better rather than worse. As we mentioned, he is still at large and the US government is yep. trying to chase him down. And we don't know what He's got to make sure his OPSEC is good. If you're putting stuff online, people can find out where it's coming from. So, uh, yeah. you know, keep it, keep it locked down, Arthur. Be careful, Arthur. You need some tips. Go to Privacy Reporter Ben Powers. He's going to walk you through those steps. <laughs> Please, no offset consulting for for people <laughs> on the run, Ben. Please tell me that's not a side gig. We're going too far in one direction. No, this general advice to no. nobody: don't be online ever. <laughs> don't be online. Don't use ben, digital devices. I can, I can deal with that. I can deal with that. Gotcha. <laughs>